Hello everybody, so today I'm just bringing you a quick video on this little card that I managed to pick up used. Um, the seller sold this card as defective, it had some issues overheating. Um, he did mention that one of the fans had seized, um, so I you know, found out that it was the, uh, the middle one. So we're just going to go ahead and replace this whole heatsink and fan stock heatsink and fan setup and um, water cool this r9 290x the the fellow who sold it to me he sold it as a r9 290 you know whatever uh, but um, it turned out to be an r9 290x so okay let's go ahead and uh, get started take this thing apart and see if we can uh, manage to save this card um, I mean in, during this times of GPU uh, crisis I want to say it's nice to find something that um, you can at least play games on I mean you're not gonna get 4k uh, resolutions with this you know and be able to play uh, games on it but uh, 1080p no problem 1440 if you are willing to you know sacrifice a little bit on the um, the graphical settings like medium medium settings for most latest titles uh, this thing will do just fine um, I'm gonna be uh, testing it with some of the, some older titles you know titles that are still uh, on Steam being played today like Grand Theft Auto 5 and uh, Doom uh, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider it's just a few games just to show you guys that this thing still has a little bit of muscle left in it still a little bit a little bit of life so um, first we need to remove all this stuff here get rid of that heat sink and fan and also exchange or change the uh, thermal paste because this thing has not been changed since it was purchased look at that um, so it's reduced to now powders you know from paste to powder so and it is pretty um, um, it is a little bit tough to get off to get off because it is stuck to the uh, to the PCB there to the substrate so we're gonna use a little bit of uh, alcohol and um, a toothbrush to try to pry that stuff off. You can use a toothbrush here to get some of the lighter stuff off. Um, the stuff around the die itself and between the SMDs there, it's a little bit harder to get with the toothbrush and just alcohol. So uh, if you have a like a credit card or maybe an ID or something that is um, plastic, you know, you can use that to go around the corner of the die there and remove some of that hard stuff. And as you can see, it's just it gets everywhere. That stuff is like rock hard. So, um, but we managed to get it all off. Um, you know, be you don't have to worry about uh, damaging anything and just use a little bit of alcohol there um, on the die and get rid of the uh, remaining stuff just don't use toilet paper to um, and I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos don't use toilet paper when it comes to to dyes direct on dye applications because the lint the little particles that stuff is hard to get off um, and you don't want anything in between the heat sink and the dye itself so I'm using here paper towels. They produce less lint. Um, you know, you still have to kind of just make sure we look at it from the side, and make sure that there is no lint left behind. Um, so you don't, you know, you have a clean, uh, nice surface there for your heat sink. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, it looks mirror clean. We're gonna go ahead and give it a quick dust off here to all the other components. Just be gentle. Um, you can use a little bit of alcohol if you like to also. I'm using 75% um, isopropyl alcohol and that works just fine. Um, but now let's go ahead and um, also remove that top plate there that comes uh, stock with the heatsink and fan. Uh, that's going to be in our way so we need to get rid of that um, for the uh, for the Kraken G12 um, you know, installation that we're going to do here. That plate cannot be there, it's, it's going to be in the way so we get rid of that um, yeah look at that it's just yeah it's just aesthetics anyway it doesn't really serve a purpose um, but uh, yeah let's get rid of some of that dust now let's go ahead and uh, get the brackets installed for the Kraken G12 installation here and uh, what I like to do is I like to just place the one you know the bracket on top of the uh, on the GPU and then pick it up go from the side and insert one screw just to hold the bracket and then 
um, you know, do the bottom one or the next screw. One thing with the, with the AMD setup, you know, the AMD bracket setup, is that, I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just my kit that came like that, I doubt it. I think it's just the thing with uh, NZXT that uh, when you put the... Um, the screws, the screw holes with the brackets are not lined up perfectly like they are with the NVIDIA setup. With AMD, you kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit, you know, and not tighten up the first screw, kind of leave it loose and then move on to the next one. And then once you get both screws in there, then tighten them both up. Um, you find that out for yourselves. It's a little bit, you know, finicky, but it's not an issue. It's just don't tighten, like I said, don't tighten up the, the first screw, leave it loose so that you manage to move move the bracket around to fit the second one in and you shouldn't have any issues. All right, so now let's go ahead and apply our thermal paste here. We're going to be using MX4. Like MX4, I've been using it for many years. It's proven to you know, be very reliable, very um, a very solid thermal paste for me. GPU, CPU applications for many years, and it's still going. That's uh, proven uh, the test of time. So I like it. I like MX4. And um, as I said before in one of my videos, that you want to make sure that you spread the thermal paste over the die. You don't want to use any P methods or X, you know, whatever fancy methods are out there. I don't care what anybody tells you, always spread the thermal paste when it's directly on the die. You don't want to leave any area there uncovered because there are small little components inside that die that if you're if they're not covered with the, if they're not making perfect contact with this with the heat sink, um, you're going to be experiencing instability and possibly even kill your, your, your graphics card. So just to be safe, spread the thermal paste. Uh, so now let's go ahead and uh, get the um, the cooler installed um, here you want to take your time don't use a screwdriver in my opinion just use your fingers finger tightening these uh, screws is enough pressure to hold that uh, the cold plate directly on the die there so no need for a screwdriver just take your time finger tighten and make sure everything's lined up and you should be good to go Alright, so our cooler is now installed. This is the H55 by Corsair, by the way, that I'm using with the Kraken G12 here. Um, it's a great combination between the two. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and see what it looks like installed in the system. And personally, I think it looks great. Very inconspicuous and very quiet. Um, what I do is I connect the, uh, the radiator fan to one of the motherboard headers. I go into BIOS and just set it to about... 50% of the speed and that's enough to keep it all cool. Grand Theft Auto is one of the most played video games out there and I know a lot of you guys that still play this game. Um, we're averaging around 74 frames per second with this little graphics card. Settings all set to high, uh, two times in the ADA scene running at 1440p. So. The game will run just fine, you know, if you don't push the graphics too hard, this will get you through, especially uh, in these days when you can't even find a graphics card. Uh, Doom is another one of my favorites. Um, it does push your system pretty hard. If you um, have the right uh, gear, this game looks phenomenal. We're averaging around 65 frames per second, minimum 44 and maximum 91. Um, I know a lot of people also that still play this video game. I have Doom Eternal. I don't find it as fun as the first one, so I'm sticking with this uh, here for the benchmark. Um, also, Shadow of the Tomb Raider DX12 title um, is still pretty demanding. You know, the graphics are just awesome. If you have the right hardware, this thing will look crazy. It's, it's a fun, very nice looking game. Here, though, the R9 290X managed to only pull. 
46 frames per second average, minimum 37 and maximum of 6 to 9. So you can see that the, the card has begun to show a little bit of age. Uh, but you know what? What can you expect? This card was released uh, later in 2013. So to find that it still has a little bit of power to run most of the games at 1080p or, you know, 1440p, medium to high settings, it's phenomenal. I mean, the card is amazing. I like it for a used graphics card, and especially since I only paid around $40 for it, I can't ask for more. Well, I'm going to leave it here. I hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe. Hit thumbs up if you did like the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. You take care. Bye-bye.